Welcome back. Uh, so now we're going to discuss actually spoilers for the first season of Sandman. In case you uh, saw it and are wondering, oh, what's my opinion on it? I'm sure people have lots of opinions on it. Um, I, I mentioned in my last video, uh, Watchmen as an example, more than Lord of the Rings. Because Watchmen was a comic book that was made. Uh, sorry, the film that was was made to look kind of like side by side of the comic book. And I was so afraid they were going to do that with Sandman. They kind of did, but they didn't. Again, they did do a proper adaptation of it. And the the thing about... Sandman is that the chapters of Shad of Sandman, their their individual chapters are are very well written. Uh, especially the first episode of Sandman. Uh, I really love the first episode of Sandman. It gave me this huge feeling of nostalgia. Uh, because it reminded me of the first time I read the the first number of the comic book. And what I really love about it is that it shows how well thought this story is. Especially after you finish, Simon. Because that that whole episode, you're not exactly sure. I wasn't even sure what I was in for it. I just, just a friend told me, like, oh, this graphic novel is great. Read it. And I was reading it. And I wasn't even sure, you know, the, apparently they got the dream of kings in a basement and he's trying to escape and finally he escapes after years and years. And that's it. That's the first chapter of, of Sandman. But that, that first episode sets up the whole comic book and I find that amazing. Like just just through through that sheer act that happens in in that first episode of of the Sandman being locked up well in, in, in the TVs for like a hundred years, being held on uh, held hostage for a hundred years, sets in motion all the events that happen later in the comic book. That that shows how well thought out this story is, and I really like that. I have always always liked that. Because um, by him being locked up, we have the creation, again, spoilers, of the Vortex. And then what is going to happen in this season of Mist. And then that he eventually has to go to hell. And this leads to the issue with Lucifer that eventually happens. And uh, this leads to issues again that happen later and later and later. And this all develops from that first episode. And I, I really like that, that it builds on itself. And it was it was pretty much perfect, I gotta say. The one, one thing, I'm pretty sure I need to watch it again. But I'm pretty sure the punishment for Alex, it's different than the one in the comic book. Uh, because the one in the comic book, I think it's called eternal awakening where he I, which i i find it i remember when i read read the comic book i i thought it was the one of the most horrifying and evil things anyone could ever come up with yeah. uh i i think it's different i think he's just having a nightmare but he looks like he's sleeping soundly in the tv series if I remember, I have to. I, I didn't watch it. I, I'm just giving my my first impressions. But in the in the comic book, what happens is that he keeps having nightmares, you know, and then he wakes up and he's like, "Oh, I'm finally awake," only to find out that he's still dreaming, and it's a nightmare. And then he wakes up, and he never gets the relief. Of actually being awake so he is the eternal awakening he's in this cycle of always waking up thinking that he has finally woken up but now he's still dreaming and that is horrifying have you ever had that dream 
where you think you've woken up but you're still dreaming that it's terrifying that that if you ever had a dream like that you have to know that it's terrifying and to make that an eternal recurring thing that sounds horrifying especially because they made it so that in the real world he just seems like he's peacefully sleeping and i thought that was evil as hell <laughs> and uh I, I remember when i read that i was like oh that sounds terrible i think they changed it a little bit in the tv series so i was like oh i, I didn't saw that but uh, the the first episode still the visuals you know the visual when he escapes it's beautiful and um then we we go into him trying to to pick up the the pieces you know that's the first arc you know him trying to to go and get his his stuff back from all the places and i was really excited for uh for two episodes one was where he goes with lucifer and the other one was with the diner episode uh the one with constantine i did talk a little bit on my other video i really liked it but it, it was just pretty much yeah, it pretty much went down like it went in in the in the comic book, with with him meeting Constantine and and telling, uh, telling Constantine like, hey, I know you have my sand, can I have it back? <laughs> and Constantine just being kind of like an asshole, like like, like ugh, guess all you can have it back. Like I don't need it somewhere somewhere i i left it with an ex-girlfriend and then they go and see that the ex-girlfriend actually like used abused the sand and disintegrated um but according to me because everyone is like oh like gina coleman is constantine like we should see her more and more i don't think if i'm remembering correctly but according to me that's the only time constantine shows up like you know in a major way in, in sandman I don't know if I remember that incorrectly. Um, so it was it was good. It was what I expected it to be. The there there were like flirtation, feel 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 flirting. I couldn't say the word. They were flirting, and I think it would have been the same if it was a man who played Constantine, because that's just Constantine. Constantine seems a, a being, and he's like, "Hey, can I hit that?" <laughs> That's just Constantine, man. So it didn't matter that much that it was Gina Coleman that was Constantine. She did she did great as Constantine. It really looked like a version, you know, a variant of Constantine. If if anything, I think they just maybe because they're nowadays they're they're starting to stray away from people smoking. She wasn't smoking. And Constantine, if you know Constantine, he's always smoking. Uh, so I think they just were like, oh, we're not, we're not gonna put her smoking that much or something. Yeah, because yeah, that that looked weird that she wasn't smoking. But yeah, that it, it is what it is. People are trying to stay stay away now for for smoking in television more often now than than before. So it it makes sense. I at least I think that's the that's my my reason for it that they didn't show her smoking constantly because that's what constantine does it's always smoking uh then he goes and picks up the 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 helm in hell and this one was the one that i was waiting for i was just like i'm ready yes uh I liked it. Yeah, but you can feel a butt coming, right? Yeah. It was it was not the the, the portrayals. The portrayals were amazing. I, I I already said it. Wendelin as as Lucifer, top notch. Uh, Tom also the whole. If you know the the chapter, this chapter is uh, pretty much him going down there. I mean, like, hey Lucifer, can I come in? have something that belongs to me can i have it back and lucifer is like no <laughs> and then they pretty much do it by trial by combat 
they decide to play a game where they literally become something and the thing that it's the bigger thing uh wins you know if you cannot imagine something that can defeat the other thing you win right so it's very it's an imagination game pretty much you know so the that sequence was really really nice they didn't need um to have a huge set for that you know because it was going to be made by cgi the images you know of 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 like him saying oh i'm a i'm a wolf and and she's uh lucifer saying well i'm a i'm a hunter and he's saying well i'm a i'm a bacteria and something like the the fight on itself is really great and imaginative especially because it just grows and grows and grows and grows to the point where where uh morpheus says well i'm life and lucifer says well i'm anti-life you know and what what can be bigger than anti-life it's not dark matter it's anti-life he's just like pretty much saying i'm dead and he's like well i'm hope there's if if you've ever been like a, a nerd that's led lots of fiction you can know that there's no bigger power than the power of hope or the power of love i think it would have been worse if it would have said well i'm love the hope is good uh and nothing can bring down hope i think he does say that well unless i'm getting my answers wrong I'd be really embarrassed if I'm talking about my favorite moment and I get my answers wrong. Uh, yeah, because one thing is about when he says he's hope and the other thing is like the 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 top moment that I absolutely love from this episode. Yeah, invoking hope. Yeah. Uh and then uh he's like, Oh well, here you can have your stupid helmet back, but how am I gonna let you out? And this is when I was like, uh, a little let down by the the adaptation of the of the set. Because if you I I, I don't have a um editing software, but if you have seen uh backstage pictures of of this filming of this episode you can tell that the 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 set for hell is just that little platform where they were standing that's it that's hell you know th that was the only room they had and hell is supposed to be like this vast thing full of demons uh and in the in the comic book it it it's it is they're just in the middle of hell they're not exactly in the castle uh when they're having the fight they're in the middle of hell and it it's really a powerful a visual when when you know sandman is trying to escape because the the ones that lucifer is telling him uh you can't escape like all my demons are just going to eat you right you, you know you have no power here he's like well if the demons don't dream about heaven then i guess i have no power here you know he invokes the power of dreams by saying that the demons dream of heaven and the demons are so shocked by this because they are dreaming of heaven that they were like vicious trying to attack him and then they stop then they just part ways and let him go and there's nothing that lucifer can do about it so the visual is really powerful and in here because the set is so small you know they have the set and then they have like down on the on the balcony they have all the cgi monsters um he just tells he just tells lucifer you know what 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 power do I have? Well, dreams, you know, demons, dreams of, of hell. 
demon's dream of hell. If there is, if you're telling me I have no power here, then I feel like I'm butchering it. <laughs> um, and and in the series, Lucifer just kind of like accepts this. She's like, eh, he's right, and just lets him go. And it, it feels a bit anticlimactic because there's this heaviness that happens in the in the comic book. But I guess because yeah, it'd be really difficult to have like a whole a whole plane of demons, you know. But it bothered me, it bothered the hell out of me that I could tell that this tiny room was a set. Just like it's a freaking freaking set. It's a setting set yes, yeah, set. Uh, the hell that they made for for Wendelin. This is just it's just breaking set. Yeah, like I could see the the foam walls and yeah, I, I hated it. The the way it looks, but everything else about it, it's great. I, it's it's a pet peeve of mine, more than than an actual uh, critique. You know, because the the scene still plays great. The the dialogue is still there and the performances are great. But yet, it bothered me that I noticed immediately that it was a set. I was like, oh, it's a fucking set. <laughs> and of course, in TV movies, you're gonna know, you know, they're, they're, they're all sets. But it bothers me when I can spot when something is a set. You know, when, when you, when, like, it takes, it takes you out. And you can be like, oh, I, I don't, I don't see hell, I see a set. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, but it was it was really nice to finally see that episode in 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 TV. And then the next one was the Ruby, and again the the episode twenty four hours. Well, twenty four the, the chapter twenty four hours has to be one of the creepiest, uh, most horrifying things I've ever read in a comic book. Um, because it again it builds up of people. If I remember correctly, in the comic book, it's just the diner that they that it's controlled by by the by John. Uh, but in in the yeah, and it, it should make sense because in the in the TV series they made it like you know it's the whole world that they can no longer lie. It's like how. Okay, so this whole apocalyptic thing happened, and in two weeks everyone was okay. Like it, it makes no sense. <laughs> it has it has to be contained to the diner, and um, like one of the the cool things about it in the comic book is that there is a narrator saying like all this these things are happening you know like the feelings the jealousy the the, the the things that were happening in the diner as they their 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 emotions went wild for the people under the impression of the ruby uh so the the job here of the person that was doing the adaptation was to get rid of the narration, but to make all of that visual. And I'm not sure if it worked that well. <laughs> like it's good, but it's not it's not that obvious that something is like bothering them. You know, it, it's just it, it it it's very subtle and it should I think it should have been more forced. More subtle. It's for uh, sorry, uh, it should have been more in your face, I guess. I, I forgot the, the word. But because it's so subtle, the visual cues, you cannot tell exactly that something... Yeah, you know something's wrong because they're, they start killing each other and having sex and doing stuff and this and that. But it, again, it's, it's, it's not that that strong uh, uh, visual as it is with the comic book but yeah it 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 was a hard chapter to adapt anyways 
because the the one in the comic book is so graphic and i don't i don't think they were going to get away with with that on the on the tv show so so after that uh morpheus finally has all his tools and he's just left wondering oh well now I'm, what i'm going to do and we finally get the the introduction of that and it's it's wonderful like i said i love the the episode where where that appears uh it shows her to be what we expect that in sandman to be which is kind and friendly and loving her brother which is just the introduction of the character for all the the coming parts that we're going to see of her and the one that keeps him grounded um and th there was one part that I, <laughs> that I didn't particularly like I'm sure that I, I, I hate when they, they put exactly what it says on the comic book into an adaptation uh, because she she insults him and in the comic book it's fine but she calls him like oh you're the worst excuse for a multi-dimensional oh, i forgot it's such a specific insult you're like the poorest excuse of a multi-dimensional uh body human embodied concept I have ever seen like she she just says something that she's supposed to be like oh and it, that is in the comic book in the comic book it's fine but when she actually says it in person it sounds a bit cringe I was like ah oh. but they they had to leave it there because it's in the comic book and I was like oh no it, like it, in TV it sounded a bit cringe because it's so specific and it doesn't sound like a natural insult. It's just instead of just being like, oh, you're a twat, you know, <laughs> you're an idiot, like something like that. No, she's so specific that it's so specific when insulting Morpheus that, yeah, sure, it, in a in a comic book, it, it works because it's just images and you can read it at your own pace. But in a conversation where you're actually having live conversation, you're like, did she did she stop to think about that? Like it, it, it didn't feel natural. That's what I'm saying. And it, yeah, it was like, oh, it sounded a bit cringe. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it, it's it's in the original one. So yeah, I can't imagine some people maybe wanted to to hear it. But when I heard it, I was like, oh, that didn't sound natural at all. <laughs> um. And because the, the whole point of that is like that that just was trying to tell to tell um dream to just get off his ass and find a new mission you know like okay you finish a little game you finish a little revenge against the people that did you wrong go and find a new purpose in life that was the whole point of that discussion which he does uh, and then they put my, one of my other favorite episodes. I, I forgot the name of, of the original uh, comic book. But it's the one with, with Hawks. With the, the, the man that refuses to die. I really like that one. Because it, it does show that the dream is flawed. You know, that he's very flawed. That he doesn't admit that he he needs people that he likes to have friends that he thinks he's superior than everyone and and that's a good thing to have on a protagonist a protagonist that's flawed he's not perfect he's petty uh he loves petty revenge uh vengeance uh he's he's a downer you know and and, and this this is very obvious when he goes and meets hogs every every hundred years uh because uh hogs is like well you're, you clearly realize by now that i'm not going to want to die so why do you keep coming why are you gaining from this like this, this stop being an, an experiment of is he gonna want to die now and and he tells him it's about friendship and dream is like 
I would never have a human friend. And again, that shows that dream is is very much flawed, which I I really like. I I really like that that episode. And it was it was done really really nice. Their 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 friendship and their chemistry. Uh, was just really nice. I I cannot say anything. I I really like that. I had I have no issues with that one. That was really nice. And then we have the whole arc of the doll's house. This one was a bit weaker than the whole introduction because the whole introduction it's a lot of um uh, individual episodes that you can kind of bump in. And that was kind of the first volume. And then there's the doll house. Doll house is like the first arc. Uh, with and I, I'll, I'll admit the whole board text thing, I never been super sure. In here, it was a bit more clear what it was. It's just that apparently she has a lot of powers to create dreams or or whatnot. But the whole board text thing, I've always been like super confused. And I did like that they gave her more uh, uh, a relationship to Unity. And I think, if I remember correctly, in the comic book, Unity just appears out of nowhere at the end. And she's like, no, I was supposed to be the Vortex. So I'm going to change my life with yours. Because, like, my life is almost over. And I spend it all sleeping. So I'm just going to... And I mean, here they actually introduced them both first and had them talk. And that was that was better. That just just having Unity appear out of freaking nowhere at the end and being like, oh, I'm going to sacrifice myself for you. Uh, so in here they have them uh, meet and talk and be like, oh, um, uh, I, I, I'm I, your great, great grandmother. And um, yeah, I, I was, uh, I was supposed to be the vortex, but this and this happened. Like it, it was, it was better built up. And I also like the the introduction of Gaunt, uh, the the nightmare that becomes a dream again, giving more a chance to Morpheus to to change, you know, because he became so so brooding those hundred years that he was locked in. And the Corinthian was great. I I love the Corinthian on this. And uh. So the whole arc is is weaker in the sense that you're no longer exploring. It is more of a the follow up of of the story of Rose Walker, and I I'll admit, even in the comic book, it it's a weaker arc, the the strongest one. Uh, I don't remember if the mist of is the season of mist. Uh, or surprisingly, we go. With where we're supposed to see, it's gonna be with Barbie, uh, from from the house with Barbie and Ken. Uh, and I I do remember that that one was slightly better. Uh, the thing is, I don't I don't have my comic books here, so I cannot like check and contrast. Um, but uh. The next one is with Barbie, and then we have the 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 big big Lucifer arc. Um, but yeah, like this one, it, it also felt weaker in the in the in the comic book. But I did like it more here, like it made more sense here. It it had better build up. I care more about Rose and her brother. Uh, and they also like managed to introduce Lita, uh, Lita Hall. It is Lita Hall, right? Uh, da 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 da. Yeah, it is Lita, but I don't remember if it's Lita Hall. 
yeah and and if you if you if you know the comic you know the importance of lita um but yeah like this this was completely different in the comic book but i like the twist that they gave it here you know to still have it and they introduce it very early uh the the baby that was created in the dream realm and why this baby belongs to dream and what that will entail later i i i did enjoy it and um i was i was glad that they enjoyed that that they put that quick and that we were able to see it because again the thing with the sandman comic book is that it has a lot of one shots for instance i i was wondering what they were going to do about the 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 episode of the cats because it, it's a really weird episode it, but it has no bearing with the story at all and they just made it like a, an extra shot like a one shot i'd remember it different though uh if you've ever read the the original let me know if it's that different i just remember that it was about a cat that finally had a dream and he dreamed he was like what's the difference between humans and and cats he was like oh humans can dream because he, he met morpheus in the dream and, and humans can dream and because they dream they can do stuff and he tries to inspire other cats to to dream and by dreaming, they can maybe one day conquer the world. But all the other cats, being cats, they're lazy. And they're like, oh, don't listen to this cat. But I didn't remember that she was inspired because her litter got killed. I don't remember that. I just remember she had the dream where she was inspired uh, to, to try and... She dreamed of a world where, where humans were the the servants of cats and cats were the the main species and she was trying to invite all the other cats to dream about it but cats were so lazy that they didn't care i think that was the, the whole point of it if i remember correctly but it was a very interesting episode and i was glad that they included it. i wasn't sure how they were going to do it so i'm just glad that they just like pop like they just like here's just the episode on its own and that they made it animated too because yeah, it would have been like crazy to have like CGI cats and people, and so it, it it landed better to animation, so that was nice. And finally, the one with Calliope, I'll admit, the one I'm thinking about is the one where with Shakespeare, where where Shakespeare, if it's spoilers, if they do make this one, where Shakespeare has to make a Midnight Summer's Dream, I forget the name of the play. But the one where where the fairies are with with Titania and Oberon, uh, from William Shakespeare, and and uh, Dream is like, oh, I like your plays because he already told, in in the I I think they're gonna do it because you know in the Hogs episode he's like, oh, I, I like this William character, you know he's he's like play playwright, and he like already they already like planted that seed that they might do it uh and that if, if you haven't heard read the comic is that there is this chapter where he invites the real kings and and queen from the fairyland like the real titania and the real over on all the fairy to see the play so it's really funny i really like that one that's the one i remember the one with calliope I don't remember it. I kept trying and trying to trying to try and, and I don't I don't remember because I I have to have read it because it's, it's the it's number seventeen, the Calliope, and the one with the cats is number eighteen, and I definitely read the one with cats, but so I I I don't have memory of the one with with Calliope. That's how I pronounce Calliope in Spanish. Sorry if I'm I'm saying it wrong in English. But um, I I liked it. It was it was nice. Uh, it was like again like a one shot. 
of her just just freeing her her ex lover, his sex lover. Sorry, um, and again the the punishment again. Uh, you you think when we think about the power of dreams, for instance, if you see Rise of the Guardians, there is also you can also see Sandman. You think of the power of dreams. They they always look so magical and I'm like oh yeah dreams. Like, I, I dream with the butterflies and this and that. It's always so magical. But the the scary thing about Sandman is that Neil Gaiman did is that he really went into the nightmare aspect of it. <laughs> and that's uh, one of my favorite things about it. He's like, yes, I, I can create beautiful dreams, but I can also give you terrible, horrifying nightmares. He's like, oh, you wanted ideas? So I can give you ideas. And he gives this writer a lot of ideas and all of it if you think about it in real life sounds horrifying for, for instance i am a person that kind of dreams with ideas for for writing the things that I, I sometimes i don't finish them or sometimes i don't i don't write them or something and when i wake up i'm like oh what was that idea i had so i understand that frustration and i imagine neil gaiman probably has had that frustration probably that's where it came from that he was like oh what if all of a sudden those ideas came into your head and then they just left so it's uh yeah i, I can totally see where it come from And it was overall, the first season was good. The thing is that, again, because people are so worried that it has to look like the comic book, it doesn't allow it to go that, 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 to wander off that much. And it's good that it's not wandering off that much, but it's also not good that it's that tight to the comic book. Um, you know, uh, we have seen what happens when something uh, is too too close to the comic book, and I'm I'm not saying again. I, I put an example of Watchmen in my other video, but another example that we can think of is the Killing Joke. <sighs> wow, that one was bad. <laughs> they tried to make it longer, and by making it longer, they made two different movies one of them that had nothing to do with batman and it was horrifying and the other one that was just a shot for shot of the comic book and it was just underwhelming so we don't want to stray too far away but we don't want to want to be that close when we're making an adaptation so i think they're they're keeping the balance right uh for other characters that i haven't talked about that much is it discussed I think it's despair. I forget the name of the endless. So, yeah, I know it's desire and delirium. Uh... I can't forget. it's despair yeah it is despair no but then it's despair is delirium and desire right yeah so yeah a lot of people were saying like oh desire has to be non-binary because uh wokeness but it was just like that in the comic book. It's just that back then we used to say it was androgynous, you know, and now now it kind of has to evolve into non-binary, which I think is perfectly fine. Like, like again, if I would have my editing software, I would put the picture of him from the Powerpuff Girls. That's desire. It's just desire. Like, feels looks acts feminine, but it's like this drag queen kind of situation but it also is a man like it, it's it's desire is everything because i guess desire can be 
you know, all kinds of things. That's the idea behind Desire. But yeah, Desire is kind of like the, the one that's poking uh, uh, the, the issues there. Uh, the creating the, the issues, sorry, uh, for, for Dream. And it's the, the annoying side. Really. But overall, it was nice and I, I really liked it. Uh, but I, yeah, like the, the Rose Walker one was weaker, but that's because in the comic book it was weaker. But the first part, half was just amazing to see. And I really want to see the rest. I hope they do do the rest. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching my opinion on this. Uh, I hope you can see, if you want to see my, my opinion. Oh, sure. If you want to see my opinion on, on the, this whole adaptation debacle with the characters and the actresses, you can see the other video I did on Sandman. And um, next, uh, we're in September, we're almost near in October, so I'll prepare the, uh, the videos for the Joker as, as it is time. We have to talk about how they, they, they're going to make this sequel with Lady Gaga. That sounds weird as hell, and I want to discuss it. Um, and, uh, yeah, I want to make some videos talking about uh, creating uh, stories and, and what stories I have thought about but haven't developed and why. So uh, I'll see you guys. Uh, like, subscribe, join in. Welcome back. And thanks for watching.